Hello everyone, I'm Black Marvin, a progressive psychedelic trance artist and professional sound designer and I'm also a teacher for electronic music production. Today I want to answer the following question. What makes a wavetable a good wavetable? And also we're going to make a good wavetable inside Faceplant. Before we start, this video has been made available a while ago already for my community of students. If you want to get a head start on sound design knowledge like this, consider joining my community of students. The link is in the description. Also, if you're looking for some quality wavetables, don't forget to check out Quantum Fold Wavetables on FractalSounds.ca. The link is in the description. And one last thing is if you want more of these video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And now let's answer that question. What makes a wavetable a good wavetable? All right, we are inside Faceplant and we're going to answer the question, what makes a wavetable a good wavetable? There's multiple answers to that question, but one of the first answer is the sweeping movement. In order to demonstrate that, I'm going to use this wavetable and I'm just going to sweep through the wavetable and you'll see that there's already something happening. I have another example here and you'll see that also in this one, there's something happening when we sweep to the wavetable. And what I mean by something happening is that there's sonically there's some movement and just that movement is already a good building block for a more complex preset. We'll go with this one and after that I will have a counter example. This one is very different from the other. There's a lot of high frequency content. Of course, if you want to do a lead that has a lot of high frequency content and has a lot of FM type sound, this one would be a really good choice. Now I have a counter example. This one is not a good wavetable because you'll see that the way it sweeps through the spectrum is not, uh, there's no flow. It's like uh, almost skippy. Now, you know, in life, not everything is black or white. So this one is not like a very, very bad wavetable, but you won't be able to use it for sweeping action. But what you could do is cycle through the wavetable and pick a specific moment or a specific frame and expand your preset out of that. But you will not be able to get a good result by sweeping it. So, for example, I would just go somewhere in the wavetable. Like you can hear at this frame, it sounds quite unique. So you could technically build a sound out of that, but you will have to rely on other sound design techniques than just sweeping through the wavetable. And, you know, there's a lot of other techniques. Now that we establish what makes a quality wavetable, we're going to make one for ourselves. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to show you uh, this sample I took. I took the liberty to sample one of my favorite acid synth. And the sample goes like this. And we're going to transform that into a usable wavetable inside Faceplan. In order to do that, we're going to get a wavetable generator. We're going to go inside the editor by clicking here. And we're going to click here, create from sample. Now, once you've selected your sample, you're going to be shown a menu like this. And trust me, the Faceplan wavetable editor is really good. So it's going to do a lot of things right for you. So the editor is going to detect the tune of your sample. There's different phase alignment possibilities. Usually lock all does the job quite well, but if you're trying to import something and it doesn't feel quite flowy, maybe try different phase alignment. And also what you can do is actually just keep that here and sweep through phase plant. So I'm actually going to move that here on my other screen and you can actually test it in like real time. So this is the lock all phase alignment. And for example, that is the correlate phase alignment. It's very similar in this case, but when you import a more intricate audio signal that sometimes has pitch change and, and more complex uh, signal, it helps to try different uh, phase alignment. So for this one, I went with Correlate. Uh, there's a crossfade possibilities, and I strongly suggest that you leave it all the way at 100%. And also, you can choose the section of the sample that you want to import. Sometimes, uh, you know, depends on the, the sample material you have, and you can 
just pick a specific uh, moment. As a matter of fact, if you remember the counter example that I've shown, the wavetable was not very flowy, uh, but there was a specific crisp moment. What you could do is import that here and select that specific crispy moment and a moment you think that is, is a quality timber that you want to preserve. And you could select that and just make a whole wavetable out of this using other technique. But that's another discussion. Now we can take a look at the wavetable it produced for us. Now, just with the wavetable, it already has that acid timber and that acid behavior. And we don't have any filter and distortion yet. So that's really cool. Uh, there's one thing I want to show you, though. It's right here at the end. There's like that weird moment at the end, which happens, by the way. And we're going to go back here into the editor. And as you can see, I have a selection tool. And I can select specific amount of frames. What I want to do is get rid of the end. I'm going to go right here, copy. So I selected all these frames because they are the ones I want to work with. And I copied them and I'm just going to go all the way here and I'm going to overwrite this. So I'm basically just getting rid of the end. Instead of deleting, I'm just pasting back everything that I want. So boom. And now I just have to validate that and now we should be okay there's no yeah you can see there's no weird end at the end and all that is left now is to save that precious wavetable now that was almost a bit too easy don't you agree uh now we're gonna make a wavetable from something a bit more complex and intricate uh, i have this pack here which is the sludge grids and synths uh it's a micro pack available on fractal sounds and I have this turbo kit here, which is basically a bunch of grid fragments, and they sound like this. Quite interesting. So we're going to try to make a wavetable out of this. First, going to get a wavetable generator. Going to go here, and I'm going to drag and drop the sample, because I showed you create from sample works, but you can also just drag and drop. So this is how it loads, and you're going to see that I'm going to play it, and it's not very, um, well, it doesn't translate well. Let's just say it that way. So we're going to need to help faceplant here a bit. So we know that the sample note is D. So we're going to try to give that information to the wavetable editor and see what it does with it. So here, the root pitch, I'm going to say, well, let's try D2. This is the result now. That's better, right? Now let's try uh, D1 and D3. So we're going to see, it's going to change the way it cuts the frames and it analyzes the frames. Uh, it's, it's actually really good, but I'm just curious to see, uh, what the other value will do. So that's D3. It's not bad. And finally D1. I don't know if you hear, but with D3, it seems to preserve a bit more the FM behavior of the original sample. So we're going to go with that. So back to D3, you can see that there's this nice part of the wavetable. And here it's like pretty much the same. So we don't need it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work with everything below 109 frames. I'm going to go here, select that. Copy, paste. Now I'm left with that. It's actually pretty flowy, and I would almost maybe keep it like this, but I want to test out the frame blend option. If you go here, FX, frame blend, it's going to apply an algorithm that's going to just 
blend the frames in some way that can give more flowy result but keep in mind that the more you put that uh, effect the algorithm will kind of soften up the sound and sometimes you kind of lose the crispiness and some details let's try the 16 frames yeah it's actually good now i'm gonna go here fixes normalize frame peak we have the same wavetable but everything now has been normalized to its maximum peak value now to me it's satisfying there's a lot of uh, more options we could apply now using all these functions i could branch off in many directions just start with this wavetable and branch off into let's say a self fm wavetable a power sync or just a very distorted wavetable but this is going to be for another video possibly even a master class and that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed the wavetable editor from faceplan is really one of my favorite these days it's really great to uh, get some flowy wavetables and some really nice sweeping signals and it really uh captures sample signal easily and convert them into wavetables um there's a whole other technique that involves like creating really new stuff and 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 really shaping the wavetable using the effects inside the editor but um i didn't cover it in this video because i wanted to keep the video light and breezy but stay tuned i'm gonna cover it in another video eventually on the channel so stay tuned for that and that's pretty much it i'm gonna see you in another video Happy producing.